Progresso is alive. The Yucatan culture thick around me. I walked the markets, talked with those who worked with their hands, saw history in stones and stars at the Museo del Meteorito. On board, Winston's bar held on to the past. Churchill looked out from the walls, and a blue moon martini brought the old back. At the Skybox Sports Bar, the game was the thing. We are strangers, but not after the whistle blew, all of us sipping old fashions. The last day I spent at the duty free, chasing bargains that smelled of far off places. The journey peaked at the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar, a spicy margarita in hand, the drink sharp as the life around me. When the ship touched New Orleans, the trip was over, but the story wasn't. The crew, the friends, their faces would stick, as would the laughter and the nights of drinks. These things, they don't leave. They sell with you, long past when the land ties you down again. Before I sign off, I will leave you with a little extra, a total eclipse of the sun. It's a spectacle of shadow over light, an unmatched phenomenon. At the crossroads of coming and going, there was a bar. It stood close to the noise of leaving and the weight of getting on board and became my place of peace. Coming in from the warm welcome of Cosmel's sun, I stepped into its open arms, full of the day's story, looking for a drink that could match the heat I had lived in. The bartender, a master of her drinks, met me with a smile that said she knew the thirst my adventures had written across my face. With the ease that comes from serving both the tired and the joyful, she began making a drink that seemed to hold all the warmth of the tropics. She placed before me a glass that caught the light of the setting sun, mixing mango and pineapple with a playful touch of chocolate, a proof of her skill. This drink without any alcohol was a new twist for me, but it was right. It was more than a drink, it was a bridge, clearing my mind for what was to come next in Progresso. This bar, placed perfectly for those moving between places, was not just a stop, it was a place of new beginnings, with each drink a step towards what's next. Here in this space between, the drinks were not just refreshments, but potions for the journey, calling me to face the next day with an open heart and a clear mind. Progresso sits on the calm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, a light of culture and beauty in the Yucatan Peninsula. It holds a balance, a careful step between its rich history and untouched nature, making it a refuge for those looking for roads not often walked, a place where history's echo meets today's life. The growth of Progresso, starting in 1872 as a project to connect Yucatan's capital directly to the sea, tells the story of a city living between what was and what could be. Its terminal remota stretching four miles into the Gulf's blue since 1989 acts as a grand invitation to the world, calling travelers to its shores. I came to Progresso off the big ship, moved easily by a bus from the dock straight to the heart of things. The place was alive, full of ways of the people there and the joy of being by the sea. The air tasted like salt and mango. Craftsmen talked of old and new under the hot sun. As I walked through the market, shops, and stalls, I was greeted everywhere I went with Vamanos Tigres. For good or bad, my kind had been here before. I wondered what kind of impression we had left, if we had left any impression at all, other than American greenbacks and the need for another beer. Drawn by the steady cadence of the waves, I sought both comfort and sustenance at Chi Chi Seafood, the taste of the sea. Here, the local offering known as the monkey awaited. It was a simple concoction. Bananas, oats, honey, and peanut butter served in a clear glass. 
It cost a modest 95 pesos, a small price for a reminder of the deep, simple pleasures found in a glass where the known and the unknown come together. At the Museum of the Meteorite, my journey took on a deeper narrative. Here, tales of celestial upheavals were laid bare. With $21, I crossed into epochs of demise and rebirth. The story was told in Spanish, and Google Translate served as my bridge across the vast linguistic divide. The museum led me from dark tales of ancient extinctions along a path that stretched across the cosmos. To face a meteor, its catastrophic impact unfolded across screens, leading to a display of the ancient life that once thrived in the Yucatan, culminating in a stark encounter with animatronic dinosaurs. This was not just a lesson, it was a deep reflection on the forces that have shaped our planet, unveiling the persistent yet fleeting beauty of life on Earth. In Progresso, my journey took me through lively market alleys. There, the vendor's true warmth painted a picture of a community where business was mixed with kindness, not pressure. A wine brim hat for the sun, Mexican vanilla hinting at untold flavors in the kitchen. Each and every discovery was a piece of the market's vivid tapestry. The Progresso boardwalk with its welcoming sands and the shuttle's nod to the odd dance between ship time and the local clock marked my way back to the cruise ship. Each step was part of a melody, an unforeseen adventure that sang with the tune of discovery, culture, and the calm pace of life by the water. On the fourth evening of my journey, as the sun sank into the sea, bathing the world in gold, I descended into the belly of the cruise ship to find Winston's bar. This place was more than a bar. It was a tribute to Winston Churchill, a man whose leadership in the storm of the Second World War was as legendary as the gin martini he often held. Winston's bar transported me to an era of grit and unyielding spirit. The walls were hung with images of battleships, still behemoths conceived by Churchill in his days as the first Lord of the Admiralty during the First World War, guardians over those who entered, photographs of Churchill chronicling his complex life turned the bar into a living gallery. Each snapshot was a portal to another time, from the haze of wartime councils to moments of quiet reflection, all within a bar that blended elegance with a deep historical respect. Yet, as an ironic twist, Jen and Pim's staple of Churchill's era were notably absent from the Carnival Bar menu. In their place, I opted for the Blue Moon Martini, a mix of Sky Vodka, Blue Curacao, and Pineapple Juice. This cocktail was a revelation, a mix of strength and tropical sweetness with a hint of citrus complexity. It was, in its balance, a fitting homage to the bar's namesake, Winston's Bar, dedicated to Churchill's legacy and the craft of cocktails, stood as a monument, not just to the man it celebrated, but to the enduring art of mixology. Like Churchill navigating the rough seas of politics, this bar mastered the vast ocean of cocktail creation, providing a haven of history and sophistication amid the waves. After dinner, as twilight wrapped itself around the Carnival Valor, the night opened up with the promise of what could be. In this twilight time, alive with the thrill of competition and the warmth of fellowship, I find myself drawn to the core of the ship's sports passion, the skybox. This was a sanctuary for fans like me, offering not just a place to gather, but a deep dive into the sports world. With large screens broadcasting live games, the skybox was more than a bar. It was a getaway to every game happening worldwide. It was a place to support one's team, catch up on scores, or just soak in the charged atmosphere. A running ticker offered continuous updates, receiving a living story of triumphs, 
losses, and moments that take your breath away. The drink menu, crafted to enhance the game watching experience, beckoned. The old fashioned stood out, a classic, always in style. Made with benchmark bourbon, a hint of Angostura bitters, and a sugar cube, it spoke of old bars and timeless class. The garnish, an orange peel with a cherry, was a tribute to tradition and a toast to the moment. With this drink, the Skybox became more than just a bar on the Carnival Valor. It became a grandstand, a meeting point of competitive spirits and cocktail craftsmanship. Here, every sip of my old fashioned was a cheer. Each game, a live narrative. The Skybox, with its lively vibe and blend of taste, captures the essence of sports. The joy, the fever, and the collective thrill of fans bound by their love of the game. On the fifth day of my journey at sea aboard the Carnival Valor, with the endless ocean stretching out before me, I was drawn to the fun shops. These were no ordinary stores. They were treasure troves for both the avid collector and the casual shopper, offering a chance to indulge in enhancing one's home bar without the heavy price tags or taxes of the mainland. The idea of duty-free shopping on the high seas felt like finding an oasis in a vast desert. The opportunity to acquire sought-after spirits at prices up to 50% lower than on land was not a mirage, but a solid reality, made sweeter by the absence of taxes. In this haven for shoppers, each bottle, from everyday choices to rare treasures for the top shelf, was offered in generous proportions, a third larger than usual. A liter became the standard, transforming shopping from a simple task into a grand adventure in value. Exploring the fun shops, one learns that the world of duty-free shopping is approachable. Rather than a daunting labyrinth, it becomes a strategic game. With the right knowledge and sharp eyes, one can find substantial savings on a range of luxury, from spirits to perfumes and jewelry. This venture into duty-free shopping is more than just acquiring goods. It's an exploration of the economics of desire, where astute buyers can enjoy the triumph of a smart deal. But the true value of wandering through the fun shops on the Carnival Valor isn't merely in the hunt's thrill. It's in the future, in the moments to come when each open bottle and each toast will evoke memories of the sea. These finds, chosen against the backdrop of infinite blue, offer not just memories of a great vacation, but also the benefits of vacation saving. In this floating marketplace, every deal comes with the promise of future celebrations making each purchase a gateway to reliving the sea's joy and freedom. As the sun made its grand ascent, turning the sky into a canvas of orange and pink on my last night aboard, I was drawn to the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar. Standing as a beacon by the pool, this place was a vibrant heart of Mexican culture, alive with promise. In celebration and farewell, I chose the spicy margarita as my parting gesture. Not just any drink, it was bold. The pepper's heat was a dance on the palate, a balance of art. With a selection of tequilas, beers, frozen drinks, and margaritas, it was a trove of delight, each an invitation to the flavors and joys of Mexico. At the center, blew the iguana, the bar's whimsical mascot, stood as a beacon of vacation joy, urging all to embrace the vibe of the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar. Amid laughter, the clinking of glasses, and the sunset, each moment here was an unforgettable escape into a tropical paradise embraced by the sea. At dawn's first light touched the horizon, a golden glow bathed the West Bank, heralding my return to New Orleans. The Carnival Valor, my ship of adventure, eased into its berth beneath the Crescent City Connection Bridge's gaze. This moment in the soft sunrise 
mark the end of a journey destined to live forever in memory. The air mingled contentment with nostalgia as I thought back on the vibrant waters and cultures navigated. My heart was full of thanks for the warmth and hospitality of the Mexican people. Their kindness wove into my journey, coloring my voyage's tapestry with rich, lasting strokes. A silent salute filled with respect went to the captain and his crew. Their expertise and dedication steered us through the season breaks, guiding the Carnival Valor with care, ensuring a journey as smooth as the calm dawn waters. My thoughts then turned to the ship's skilled bartenders, whose spirit and flavor alchemy made each evening a celebration beneath the stars. Their mixology wasn't just about drinks, but experiences. Each cocktail a skill and passion showcase. The Blue Iguana Tequila Bar, Winston's Bar, the Skybox, and all became not just places, but havens of joy and fellowship. Each cocktail served was a toast not only to the night, but to our collective voyage, blending laughter, sea whispers, and the quiet bond of shared moments. These elements, with the adventure spirit aboard the Carnival Valor, made it more than a ship. It became a keeper of memories, a maker of friendships, and a testament to the world's beauty and kindness. As I disembarked in New Orleans, I stepped off with a fulfilled heart, carrying the memories as if they were treasure and the promises of future adventure. Though the voyage ended, the stories, friendships, and laughter's echoes would sail with us always, beyond the horizon, into our lives' expanse. The sun burns and the moon glows. For years beyond count, they caught the eye of man. When the moon slips before the sun, casting shadow over light, it's a thing unlike any other. Myths were born of it, legends too, and science found a field ripe for harvest. It's a time when things seem to stand still, a moment for looking inward, and maybe for a drink. Enter the Orange Eclipse Cocktail. In 1911, they crafted Mount Gay Eclipse, named for the solar eclipse and Halley's Comet that had come the year before. It ages in charred whiskey barrels, pulling the crispness of vanilla and banana into itself, along with deep tones of caramel, the fruits of summer, and spice. It finishes with an oaky, slightly burnt taste. They mix it into a cocktail they call the Orange Eclipse, with blood orange juice, sweet vermouth, and bitters. The taste of the islands, Barbados, the farthest edge of the West Indies. It is here that Mount Gay, the oldest rum maker by any record, dating to 1703, still stands. This is what you will need. Two ounces Mount Gay Eclipse rum. One ounce blood orange juice. Half an ounce sweet vermouth. Four dashes of Angostura bitters. Make sure you go to the descriptions to get this recipe. This is how you make the delicious Orange Eclipse Cocktail. Fill a cocktail shaker full of ice and then add the Mount Gay Eclipse rum, the blood orange juice, the sweet vermouth, and the bitters. The next step is to shake for 15 seconds and then strain into a chilled cocktail glass. Garnish with an orange peel and enjoy reasonably. Cheers to you and yours. Thank you so much for watching this video. And remember, we can't do this without you, so please hit that subscription button. Go watch the first part of Carnival Valor's trip to beautiful Cosmel. I'll leave a link for you in the descriptions. Our next episode, New Orleans Best Gumbo, airs Tuesday, April 30th. Make sure you see it. And I'll see you next time on Gulf Coastal Connections.